Welcome to Tab Virtual. The online broadcast of Sunday morning service at the historic Tabernacle Baptist Church in West Palm Beach, Florida. Our pastor is the Reverend Gerald D. Kistner. We are glad you chose to worship with us today and we invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you are in search of a church home, Pastor Kistner and the members of Tabernacle would love to have you become part of our Tabernacle family. The historic Tabernacle Baptist Church. We are God's church on the hill, serving Christ. Join us now as we offer our highest praise and worship to God. Thank 
How many of y'all believe that our God can work it out? Yes, yes. Hallelujah and praises to his wonderful name. Amen, amen. Good morning, good morning. It's wonderful to be in the house of the Lord on this first Sunday in February. First Sunday of Black History Month. And the Love Month also, amen. All right, all right. Won't you please stand and join me for our call to worship. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them, full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful he provides food for those who fear him he's ever mindful of his covenant he has shown his people the power of his works amen, amen. please remain standing as reverend ralph pittman senior gives us our morning invocation let us pray our Father and our God. Once more and again, Lord, we, your children, have been blessed to see another day that thou hast made. Oh, Lord, we come with gracious hearts and we lift up your Son, our Lord, Savior, and Redeemer, Jesus Christ. We say thank you, Lord. You've been a mighty good God. 
you have certainly brought us from a mighty, mighty long ways. We thank you this morning that we'll be able to come out and assemble under this tent called Tabernacle one more time. Oh, it's been so wonderful, Lord, just being knowing that we're in your care. We, we're glad to be here this morning to rejoice in the Holy Spirit. Come into our hearts, Lord Jesus. Please come into our hearts. Let the Spirit of our Lord God abound in him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen.
Good morning, church. I bring you greetings from the month where we celebrate love for self and others as part of the passionate members of the February month ministry. Are there any visitors visiting and worshiping with us this morning? If you are here in church, would you please stand? We recognize our visitor in church today, but we also know we may have some visitors online. So if you're visiting with us online this morning and joining us, definitely give us a thumbs up. But on behalf of our amazing trio of pastors, Reverend Gerald Kisner, Reverend Verona Matthews, and Reverend Ralph Pittman, and this great congregation, we're so glad that you chose to join us today. If you do not have a church home, uh, this great congregation would love, love it if you would join us and make Tabernacle, consider making Tabernacle your new home. So for today, just sit back, relax, and enjoy how the Tab family spend their time worshiping with God today. Thank you. If you've ever been sick or on the sick and shut in list at any time, and you're worshiping with us today, would you raise your hand or stand? Nobody's ever been sick, huh? <laughs> That's great. That's a good thing. That's a very good thing. But thank you. Uh, thank you, Deacon uh, Stevens, for raising your hand. But God is good, isn't he? That he's kept us whole. And we are so grateful. You know, this is Black History Month. And as Dr. Walter Pierce eloquently reminded many of us earlier this week, black history is not a month, it's a lifetime. It's a lifetime celebration of many things. It's a celebration of diversity. It's a celebration of recognizing that black history unites all of us, and it helps us understand the importance of our stories. I saw this painting this week, and I believe it will resonate with many of us. It says, dream like Martin, lead like Harriet, Fight like Malcolm, think like Garvey, write like Maya, build like Madam CJ, speak like Frederick, educate like W.E.B., believe like Thurgood, challenge like Rosa. Welcome to this great, amazing month of black history experiences and celebration. Welcome again, and thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I am Gabrielle Liana Ransom, and I'm a student at UB Kinsey Elementary School of the Arts. I want to give honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And I wanted to thank Reverend, Reverend Kistner. Reverend Pittman and Reverend Matthew. I'm going to read a black history speech of Mrs. Anira Hudnell, born 1920 through 2018. 
Mrs. Anira Hudnell is properly defined as a Renaissance woman. A native in Florida, she began life in the city of Jacksonville, where she attended both public and private institutions in pursuit of an early education. After high school graduation, she matriculated at Florida A&M a &M College, known as FAMC, where she received her degree in English literature with minors in French and arts education. The education of black students was her passion, and after graduating from FAMC, she settled in the town of West Palm Beach. She taught variously at elementary, junior high, and high school levels, leaving a dynamic impression wherever she worked. While teaching at Roosevelt, the principal, Mr. Burton G. Salis, recognized her artistic abilities and encouraged her to get additional training in the arts. She matriculated at Tuskegee University and earned her arts certification. As a teacher, her demand for cor correct grammar usage was unrelenting. To this day, students who were fortunate enough to be under her guidance speak glowingly of the teacher she was. She retired as Dean of Students for Gulfview Junior High in 1978. She was an adjunct part-time instruc instructor in arts at Roosevelt Junior College, the only institution of higher learning at that time in Palm Beach County for black students. Mrs. Hudnell's life transcended the educational arena. She was a longtime member of Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church in West Palm Beach and was at one time was the or organist and pianist for the Tabernacle Gospel Course, even though she was musically self-taught. She took pride in that all her works were hands-on from idea generation to complete to completed in devier. She recognized that the living experiences of black people in Palm Beach County were overlooked as she became the historian contemporary of contemporary black life in the country. Her clippings and news articles showcase the history of who we are. She traveled countrywide informing audiences of of the black experience in South Florida. Today, plans are being developed to find a permanent home for these valuable historical documents. For, mem for many years, she was active in the American Association of University Women and, at the, reti and the retired teachers of Palm Beach County. Her life reflected her philosophy and favorite saying, if I can help somebody as I travel along the way, then my living will not be in vain. Mrs. Anira Hudnell, educator, artist, musician, civil rights leader, civic leader, woman of God. Thank you. Thanks, Sister Ransom, for giving us that wonderful information. And of course, Sister Hunter was an icon. This is Black History Month, and she really did so much to keep the history alive, particularly in Palm Beach County with her exhibits. We remember how she worked so assiduously and so hard and just making sure we didn't forget the history. And so we appreciate that. We want to remember her and we got to keep trying to figure out a way to make that uh, exhibit permanent. We got to figure out a way to, to do that. Uh, uh, we don't want to let that die. That's the problem. So much of our history gets lost. And uh, we want to make sure we try to get that. I know there's some efforts afoot to try to do this, and we want to try to support that. Let's give Sister Ransom another round of applause. Good job. 
And now we come to the part of our service. We want to install all of our church leaders. And uh, I don't know, I didn't know if uh, Sister um, Moore was going to be here in time to put it up on the screen. I, I don't know if you can get that. You probably can. But anyway, I have handouts. I want to, all leaders, please stand up. Deacons, you all take these. All right, we want to install our leaders, uh, all our leaders. Ordinarily, we, we have you come up front, but we'll just let you stay in your seat, and we're passing out our pledge. COVID has kept us from doing this for a couple of years, but we want to really get back in the swing. Uh, all leaders of in all our ministries, if you're the leader of a ministry, you need to stand up so that you can have the pledge. And I want to tell you why this is so important. Uh, oftentimes we forget that as a head of a ministry, you're not just doing this. You're doing this for the Lord. Amen. Uh, this is a commitment that you make as your service to God. And I know sometimes it gets hard. Your, your, your followers don't follow you. You can't get people to help you. You get tired. But Jesus got tired. But he knew that his assignment from God was to do what the Lord had told him to do. And if you've taken on the role as a leader of a ministry, I don't care how big or how small, it is part of your faith walk. It is part of your commitment, not to Reverend Kissner, not to Tabernacle Church, but to the people of God and to God himself. As Christians, it's about service. Jesus came not to be served, he said it himself, but to serve others. And if you have accepted a leadership position, it is a sacred position. I know it gets tiring. I know it's hard. Day after day, it gets tough. You have other things that you're doing. But the reason we have this installation service is to help you remember what your original call was. It is a call to service. It is a call to touch the least of these. It is how Christ is made known to others, not by what we say, but by what we do not by the position we hold, but by the action that we do. And if we're to be the church that God has called us to be, all of us, we're servants of the most high. Whatever your leadership position is, it is a call, a sacred call. And in days when you don't feel like doing it, in days when you want to throw in the towel, in days when you want to give up, remember, this is how we show our love for God. This is how we manifest the Christ that is in us. It's easy to be a Sunday Christian, to just come to church on Sunday. But to be a real follower of the carpenter from Nazareth, it is what is our service? How do we help others? How do we reach outside of ourselves? And the various ministries that we have at Tabernacle, the only way they're going to be effective, the only way they're going to be able to flourish is if you and I Remember what our sacred call is and what our sacred responsibility is. Now, I know I'm, I'm lecturing today, but, but I have to do this because we're starting a new year. And I know COVID has thrown us back, but it's time for us to regroup and to do those things that God has called us to do. So whatever your ministry is, if you are a ministry leader, if you're one of the leaders of Tabernacle, we must remember it is a call to service. Amen? Amen? All right. I will read and you will read the highlighted part, the part that's in dark ink. You accept that the office to which you have been elected or appointed, do you promise with the Lord as your helper to faithfully fulfill its duties? We do. Pray now for the faith 
and compassion of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the boldness of Peter, for the evangelistic zeal of Philip, for the administrative insight of Priscilla and Aquila, and for the wisdom of Paul. God has endowed each of us with unique gifts and talents for the edification of the church and the work of ministry. Will you accept this church office in proportion to your faith to prophesy, to minister, to teach, to exhort, to give liberally, to lead with diligence, and to show mercy with cheerfulness? Remember those who were judges in Israel and leaders in the New Testament church. Remember our mothers and fathers in the faith, our ancestors who built and carried this church. They accomplished much for they were rich in faith, wisdom, and courage. Do you covenant and promise that you will walk together in love for one another and exercise affectionate care and watchfulness over all those given to your charge? According to your abilities and opportunities, show good to all, especially in helping to extend the gospel in its purity and power to the whole human family. Will you regularly support the work of this church by systematic contributions, both spiritual and financial? May God uphold you and direct you as you go forth. Let us pray. O oh, Spirit, Spirit of the living God, now you have heard us in the midst of our brothers and sisters make this sacred covenant before you and before others. O oh, God, let your Holy Spirit imbue in each and every one of us the strength, the courage, and the will to do those things that are pleasing in thy sight and abstain from the things that are not. Oh God, continue to bind us all together in that agape love that goes from heart to heart and breast to breast. Strengthen each and every leader in their individual ministry that when they are weak, you would give them strength. When there is doubt, you would give them wisdom. When they are ready to give up, that you would give them power and courage to go on and see what the end has in store. Oh God, we exalt you and we adore you and we pray that as we have made this sacred commitment in the days to come, we'll remember that we stood on this day in your presence and made this sacred vow in Jesus' name. Let all of God's children say, Amen. God bless you and God keep you. Amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, we come to the part of our church service when we take that quiet, sacred moment of solitude, what Howard Thurman called that inner journey when we reflect on the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, when we think about what God has done in your life at this moment, quietly reflect on God's goodness. This is our moment of silent meditation.
Amen. Now we come to the prayer of our service when we all can collectively and joyfully participate. That's the giving of our tithes and our offerings. <laughs> to those of you that are watching digitally, you may use one of our platforms or you can mail your offering to us at Tabernacle Church, 801 A Street, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33401. Or as so many of you have continued to do, you actually bring your offerings to us at the Agape House. Just make sure someone is there and please wear your mask. Please give generously for the Lord loveth a cheerful giver. Also, if you've not made your investment to peace or if you haven't started because you know you can do it piecemeal, please remember, we're starting a new season of peace. We're gonna be having our house meeting in a couple of weeks here after church. But it is important as we start this new season to try to bring justice in Palm Beach County. Peace and liberation are not free. Justice is not free. So please make your investment. Ushers, you may come forward. Let it be used for the uplifting of your kingdom. Lord, we're thankful to those who gave, but also we're thankful to those who had it in their hearts to give but could not. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
amazing how the Holy Spirit moves. Um, I have not talked to the music folk about what they were going to sing and do. And this last song really kind of ties into my sermon. As you listen to the words, it's about keeping your lamp burning, keep it trimmed. It's really telling those folk to be alert, to be ready, because what they're talking about is you don't know when the Lord's going to come. And that uh, you don't want to have your light not lit when the Lord shows up. You want to be alert. You don't want to be caught in the darkness. It ties in with what I'm going to try to talk about today. In Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth, the 16th chapter, 13th verse, one verse today. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version, the Sacred Writ. This is what it says. Keep alert. Stand firm in your faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Keep alert. Stand firm in your faith. Be courageous. Be strong. I want to I want to say despite what some folk are saying, despite what some folk are saying, you still need to be awoke. Despite what some may be saying, you kneel, you still still need to stay woke. Let me say it again. Despite what some may be saying, I'm not calling any names, but despite what some may be saying, you need to stay woke. Pray with me now, will you folks? Oh, spirit, spirit of the living God, please, please now fall afresh upon this word. Oh, God, touch it anew that it might challenge us, direct us, and guide us. And oh, Lord, even if it has to break us, somehow, Lord, through the power of your Holy Spirit, we might leave this place somehow transformed, somehow strengthened to be different. When we leave this place, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. You need to stay woke. There's a whole lot of discussion going around about woke. There's a whole lot of conversation, particularly in this state, but all over the country. And it's coming from a certain segment of the body politic that seems to want to demonize certain people, certain ideas. It has caught on in an amazing way. It's gone viral, if you will, that some folk are saying that in Florida, woke is going to die. In Florida, wokeness has come to die. We're against woke in schools, woke in corporations, woke in all of our institutions. This attack against so-called wokeness, and it's really become a dog whistle for some very wicked and insinuous ways. For really, what does it mean about woke? Uh, folk have taken this and have turned it into something that is, I say, really a dog whistle. That when you hear it, it is demonizing, again, certain folk. It's demonizing certain ideas. Now, I went to Webster's Dictionary just to look up the word woke. Because you hear this, everybody's talking about, we're against woke, we're going to kill woke. We're not going to allow woke in Florida. We're not going to allow woke in our corporations. We're not going to allow woke in our schools. And so I said, let me go just see what, what they're talking about. Webster's Dictionary says, woke is to be aware. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Actively attentive, 
Something sounds good to me. To important societal facts and issues. Now watch this. Especially issues of racial and social justice. Let me read that again. According to Webster's, woke means to be aware and actively attentive to important societal facts, facts, not real facts, and issues, especially issues of racial and social justice. Sounds all right to me, doesn't it? But yet there's some folk that have tried to take this meaning of woke and have turned it into something evil. I say they've used it to demonize certain ideas, to demonize certain people, and to make it anti-woke is something that is good when we know it is not good at all. Paul, in this letter to the church at Corinthians, you remember that church, that church of unruly individuals, they were having a whole lot of problems. They had all kinds of issues, and Paul had to really get on their case from time to time. And he had heard some of the difficulties that the church was going on. He had heard all the backbiting, the fighting, the division, the divisiveness that was going on, the failure to think about their less fortunate brothers and sisters. He had, he had tried to help that church at Corinth understand that if they were to truly be followers of Christ, there were certain things that they had to be engaged in. And so he writes this, he writes two letters as a matter of fact. And he's trying to tell them, he's trying to give them some courage. And he says in this particular letter, at the end of the letter, keep alert. Stand firm in your faith. Be courageous. Be strong. And, and he said this to this church at Corinth because they were beginning to get nervous. Their hero, Jesus the Christ, had been executed on a hill, Golgotha. And they had thought that he would be around to show them how to deal with the Roman Empire. But now they were gone. And they were beginning to fear and were beginning to lose their faith. They were beginning to think because the political environment had turned so topsy-turvy and the oppressiveness was so strong, they had begun to lose their hope. They had begun to doubt whether there was something in being true to Christ. And I say today, even many of us, we're beginning to wonder with all the evil that is going around, with all the wickedness that is taking place, many of us are beginning to fall back in our faith. Paul wanted the church at Corinth, and I believe he's speaking to us today, that we have to be alert. We have to be woke. We cannot be asleep. We cannot allow the culture to lull us to a sense of complacency. Now, Paul was talking about spiritual alertness. He was talking about how the church had to begin to think about what it meant to be in Jesus Christ. He was talking about don't lose your spirituality. Don't forget those things that he called them into being that you had to worship and how you had to keep your faith, how you had to develop and cultivate a deep prayer life. But I believe not only can this text be applied to our spiritual lives, but I believe it can be applied to our practical and our social and our political lives as well. There are those that would have us go to sleep. There are those that would have us forget what so many of our ancestors fought for, so many of our ancestors died for, and that we cannot allow these people who are in power right now to make us forget how far we've come. We must never forget. We must never forget the sacrifices that have been made. Yeah, this is Black History Month. And as so many have said, black history is every month. It ought not just be one month in February where you do it and then all of a sudden you forget about our contributions. No, we must remember the dignity and the fight that our ancestors had. We must remember to stay alert. And this whole notion of wokeness is nothing but a fake trick of those in power to take us back to where we were before. Paul tells the church at Corinthians, keep alert, stand firm, 
in your faith. Be courageous. My brothers and sisters, these times in 2023 and moving on are going to require us to be strong in our faith, to be strong in our commitment, and to know that God is sovereign, that even in the midst of wicked men and women, God still is in control. Be alert, be strong, not only spiritually, but be alert to what's going on around the culture. Be alert to what's happening in the political arena. Be alert to what's happening in society. Be alert to what's happening in our schools. Be alert to what is happening all about us. My brothers and sisters, in 2023, we can no longer just idly sit by complacently on our hands and let other folk do the heavy lifting. You and I and the church of Jesus Christ must be in the forefront of justice. We must stand up for those that cannot speak for themselves. That's why, my brothers and sisters, our work at peace with these 23 congregations is so important. We have to speak truth to power. We have to, as Chuck D says, fight the power. And when we fight it, it's not with violence or force. Because in the last part of this pericope, he says, let all that you do, do it in love. You see, the church at Corinth was doing everything but loving one another. They were hating on each other. They were bickering among each other. There was no diversity. There was no unity. They were supposed to be the church of Jesus Christ, yet there was little individual divisions. There was little certain groups, certain little posse, certain little silos. It was not the unified that church that Jesus said he came to die for. It was not the church that said when you come together as one, you have power. You have earth-shaking power. When you stand as one on one accord, you can tell that mountain to get in the sea and commit suicide. When you stand together, there is nothing that you cannot do. We, as Paul says, must keep alert. We must stand firm, not only in the spiritual realm, but in the social and in the political realm. Oh, I say again, this is Black History Month, and remember Dr. King, in all of his speeches, there was a common thread that ran through King's speech. Go back and check them out. That common thread was one of alertness. That common thread was one of fighting the power. That one, that one thread was one of standing together and that yes, we shall overcome. Yes, we can speak truth to power. Yes, we can make a difference. Yes, we can change the narrative. But you have to get up off your duff and stand and be counted. In King's graduating speech at Morehouse, I believe, I believe, in 1969 to the graduating class at Morehouse, he warned them about the coming dangers. This was in 1969. He warned them to be on alert for racial attacks, to be on alert for how the culture was going to change. He warned them, and in most of his speeches, he was always talking about how we had to make this society live up to the ideals that are in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, that this freedom is for everyone, not just for a specific few. He challenged those graduates to realize in the future Things were not going to be easy, and yet here we are in 2023, and there are folk that dare to turn back the time, the hands of time. How dare they take out black history in school? How dare they say we're not worthy of being studied? How dare they think they can change the narrative? How dare they fight diversity? How dare they challenge the true meaning of what has happened in this country? The 1619 Project is fact. It is real. It is what happened to this country. And the only way you cure a cancer is you acknowledge it and you cut it out. That's how you cure a cancer. There are those that would say we can't make people feel uncomfortable. Well, the only way you get changed is you've got to make people uncomfortable. The gospel makes us uncomfortable. Jesus makes us uncomfortable. The only way you bring about change is you've got to make some folk uncomfortable. Jesus came 
to make us uncomfortable. Jesus said, love thy neighbors. That's uncomfortable. Do good to those that treat you badly. That's not comfortable. To love those who dog you out and talk about you, that's not comfortable. To share what you have with others, that's not comfortable. But Jesus stood for making us uncomfortable. And so if folk of the other hue feel uncomfortable, well, I'm sorry. What about our little black boys and girls that have been uncomfortable for years and are still uncomfortable? How dare you say little white boys and girls cannot be made uncomfortable? We must know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Keep alert. Stand firm in your faith. Be courageous. Be strong. This journey is not for the weak. This is not a dash. It's a marathon. Folk have bled and died to get us to a point of equality. And there are those that are uncomfortable with that. Well, I'm sorry if you're uncomfortable. You've been comfortable for too long. It's time for the tables to turn. And the only way they turn is if we're alert and we stand strong. In Montgomery, Alabama, in the Peace and Justice Museum, if you haven't gone there, go down there, and you'll see in those corridors the exhibits that commemorate over a 1,000 lynchings in this country, even in the 19th and the 20th century, lynchings of black men and, and some women who dared to just try to even vote and dared to just try to live like other human beings. At the end of World War I, when about 380,000 black veterans came back to the South to dare to ask for their rights, it unleashed a whole torrent of lynchings in the land only because they dared to act like they were human beings. And we know Dr. King in Memphis, Tennessee, who went to be with sanitation workers who are being treated as less than men who dared to stand for righteousness and justice. He received a bullet because he stood up for what was right. This way is not easy, but we must be prepared to sacrifice whatever is needed to make truth land throughout the whole universe. And it comes from being alert. We're in the midst of times right now when folks say, there should not be diversity in the marketplace. We're living in a time where folks say we should know about the racist history of this country. We're living in a time when folks don't want to admit the ills that have gone wrong. Well, Jesus himself said the only way you get redemption is you confess your sins. You admit you've done wrong. You heal the wounds, and then reconciliation can take place. There can be no peace unless you come together with reconciliation. So these folk that are anti-woke, I would say, are really anti-the Lord. They're anti-godliness. I'm afraid to report in 2023, there's even some churches that dare to fall and drink the Kool-Aid and buy the hype. They dare to stand in that number of divisiveness. They dare to attack Genders. They dare to attack women who want to control their own bodies. They dare to attack those who would dare to stand up for truth and righteousness. And we, my brothers and sisters of the church of Jesus Christ, must not fall asleep. Jesus said in Luke 26 and 21, I believe, somewhere that he talks about being alert. In Matthew 25, he talks about you got to stay awake. Be alert. The choir just sang that song. Your, your lamps have to be trimmed. Your, your candles have to be lit. You need to be awake. You need to be alert. You need to be watching what's going on. The culture, my brothers and sisters, would love to have you go to sleep. You remember in the history of this country in the Old West, Folk of ill will 
would come to our Native American brothers and they would give them a whole lot of that fire water, get them all drunk and messed up and take their land and break their treaties. There are all kind of trickery that would go on to keep people from having an opportunity to sit at the table of prosperity. This is a land that is supposed to be the home of the free and the land of the brave, not for one unique group of people, but it's for all of God's children. We're all wonderfully and fearfully made in the image of God, and we all deserve a seat at the table of prosperity. And there are those in high places that would make us take a back seat. There are those in high places that would turn back the hands of time, I say. And the only way they can do it is if we're asleep and not awake. You must be woke. Stay awake. Be alert. Know what's going on. Keep your eyes open. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. Don't buy the hype. Keep your eyes on the prize. Look at what's going on. Be alert to what's happening. Don't fall for the hype. You and I, my brothers and sisters, must be on guard. We must be vigilant. We must know what's going on around us. Don't be watching all that junk TV. Look at things that that help your mind. Look at things that are going to make you smarter. Look at things that are not pop. Look at things that have value. Look at things that put your mind on high things. You want to be what God has called you to be, a free smart, intelligent human being. Well, let me tell you, the disciples, they fell asleep when our Lord was in agony in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was agonizing over the fact that he was about to be executed on Calvary. They couldn't stay awake to give him some comfort and some solace in his moment of anguish. And isn't that the way it is with many of us? There's a brother or sister that is hurting, and we're asleep while they're going through their problems. Oh, you need to stay awake. In the book of Acts, in the 20th chapter, in the 9th verse, there was a lad by the name of Eutychus. When Paul was preaching, he fell asleep, and he fell two stories to his death. But it was only because of the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit he was relieved and brought back to life. Stay awoke. And NPR says that in this last election, over 3 million African-American voters failed to go to the polls here in Florida. And how did that work out for you? Stay awoke. You and I must be awoke if we're to bring the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Stay awake. Stay alert. Be on guard for the kingdom can only come if you and I become full participants in bringing the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Don't fall asleep. Don't buy the hype. Stay alert. Be alert. Stay on time. Stay on point. Paul says... Keep alert. Stand firm in your faith. Be courageous. Be strong. But the most important thing as he wraps this thing up, let it all be done in love. Love is what will allow us to go upside the rough side of the mountain. Love is what will allow us to take the licking and keep on ticking. Love is what will allow us to overcome our enemies. Love is what will allow us to sit at the sea. Love is what will bring us together and do the great things that God has called us to be. Love can overcome evil. Love can do anything but fail. You and I must be love merchants. We must stay woke despite what everyone is saying. Stay woke. Amen. Amen. That's why I was so happy to see Sister Ransom up here, because we've got to help our young people stay awoke. Teach them that there's more than video games. There's more than TikTok. There's more than Facebook. There's more than Instagram. 
Help them to get stuff in their mind. Don't be afraid to study. Don't be afraid to read. Don't be afraid to know what's going on around you. We got to encourage our young folk to know there's more to life than what they see in the culture. Stay woke. Well, we now come to the most important part of our service. Would you please stand to your feet? We're going to open up the doors of our church. This is the time, if you don't have your own personal relationship to Jesus Christ, we extend the opportunities for you to come right now. I would love to be your pastor, and these good folk would love to welcome you into the Fellowship of Tabernacle. All you have to do is give your hand to the preacher and your heart to Jesus Christ. If you're outside the ark of safety, don't put it off any longer. The Lord has already made the greatest sacrifice. He gave his all for you. And all you have to do is say, I yield, I yield to the God of creation. The doors of the church are open. You can come by letter or you can come to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit. But the most important thing on this fine morning, this first Sunday in the new month of February, is to give your heart to Jesus Christ. He is already your Savior. And all you have to do is say, I yield. I yield. Don't try to face these burdens by yourself. The doors of the church are open. Won't you come? Won't you come? Or you may have been baptized a long time ago, but you don't have a regular church home. We would love to welcome you into the fellowship that is tabernacle. All you have to do is take that step and join right now. Is there one right now? All you have to do is say, I yield, I yield to the God of creation. Won't you come? Won't you come? His yoke is easy. And if you're watching us on the live stream, you can join that way. All you have to do is call us at 561-832-8338. And the Lord will be discussed with you and we'll take you in right now. Is there one today? All you have to do is say, I yield, I yield. Come to Jesus right now. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church. Last call, last call, last call. Again, in TV land, all you have to do is call us at 561-832-8338. And we'll discuss salvation to you. But if you're here right now, all you have to do is make that step right now. sisters as we prepare for our Lord's Supper. If there's anyone that joined us and has not received the right hand of fellowship, anyone here that has not received the right hand of fellowship, okay. Uh, those of you in digital land, you can get your wine, your grapefruit, grape juice rather, your, your bread as we prepare for the Lord's Supper. Hello? Oh, okay. All right. My sisters and brothers, as we prepared into this sacred ordinance, remember we have two ordinances. We have our
communion, which we do, the Lord says often as you do this in remembrance of him. And then we have our baptism. This is what binds us all together. This is the common thread that we have that unifies us. And whenever we come to this table, again, as I've said time and again, it not, not just be some routine, rote thing that we do. It, it has meaning. It's part of our faith walk. And the reason we do it, it makes us remember the Lord's death, suffering, burial, but most important, his resurrection. And because he lives, we live today. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. No matter what we're going through, we have the Lord Jesus Christ. And he promised never, ever to leave us alone. And so when we come, when we eat, and when we drink, let us reflect on the goodness of the Lord. I'm going to read our prayer for communion, and then Sister Reverend Matthews will lead the congregation. The table of bread is now to be made ready. It is the table of company with Jesus and all who love him. It is a table of sharing with the poor of the world, with whom Jesus identified himself with. It is a table of communion with the earth, in which Christ became incarnate. So come to this table, you who have much faith, and you who would like to have more, you who have been here often, and you who have not been for a long time, you who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who have failed. Come, it is Christ who invites us to meet him here. Loving God, through your goodness, we have this bread and wine, grape juice to offer, which has come forth from the earth and human hands have made. May we know your presence in the sharing so that we may know your touch and presence in all things. We celebrate the life that Jesus has shared among his community through the centuries and shares with us now made one in Christ and one with each other, we offer these gifts and with them ourselves a single living act of praise, amen. Let us pray. Lord, as we prepare to eat and drink, let us always remember your sacrifice and remember your steadfast faithfulness that we might emulate you in trying to do what the Lord has called us to do that we would love one another as you have loved each and every one of us. Continue to guide us and bless these implements in Jesus' name, amen. amen. On that night in the upper room, he took bread and after he had broken the bread into many pieces, he looked to heaven and he said, this bread, this broken bread, represents my body that was broken for thee, eat in remembrance of me. And in like manner, he took the cup which was filled with the fruit of the vine. And after looking to heaven and asking God's blessings upon it, he said to those in the room, and he speaks to us through the corridors of time, this cup represents my blood, which was willingly shed for remission of sin. Drink ye all of it in remembrance of me. And when they had finished, they went out to the Mount of Olives, singing a hymn. Amen, amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, as we always do before we leave, we want to have intercessory prayer. And we need prayer mightily. Prayer is the key to all things. And you may stand at your seat, or if you like, you may come to the altar. But wherever you are, please do that right now, as Reverend Matthews will then take us to the throne of grace. Lord God, we... We come before you, Lord God, just thanking you, Lord God. We praise you. We lift you up. We magnify you, Lord God. 
we call upon your Holy Spirit, Lord God, to come inside of each and every one of us, Lord. Remove, Father God, anything inside of us that is not of you. We pray for your blessings, Lord God, and we pray that you just fill us, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. We need your guidance. We need your blessings. We need your mercy, Lord God. Some of us need your healing, Lord God. Some of us need to be redeemed, Lord God. Some of us need to be cleansed, Lord God. We just come to you, Lord God, lifting our hands in prayer to you, Lord God, because we need you, Lord. We magnify you. We glorify you. We worship you. We love you, and we adore you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for we are so grateful for all that you have done for us and all that you will do for us, Lord. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Lord. A couple of quick announcements. And again, on, on your prayer list, we're going to ask you if you would especially pray for uh, Kay's granddaughter, Jay Taylor Abbott, who's in the hospital and she really needs our prayers. Continue to pray for Marjorie Jackson, who is dealing with a major health issue, but her spirits are good. And then we want to pray for Deacon Natalie. We're glad to see her back upstairs. Uh, she's still dealing with her her mother's not out of the woods but her mother's back at home and we want to continue to keep her in prayer and also keep deacon joe baker in prayer as he continues the healing process and there's so many others that are in the need of prayer so we want you to add those to your personal prayer list now i i have a special appeal i really need your help i need your help all you leaders you took your pledge but we need some help with the health ministry uh, that is a very important ministry of our church, and not just for our members in the church, but it blesses so many folk outside of the church. And the health ministry needs some more hands. So if you're not doing anything right now, or even if you have another ministry, but you would want to help us out, please call the church office. Let Sister Maxine know that you're willing to become a part of the health ministry. We're going to be having a meeting soon to refigure and refigure out what we have to do to make it go forward. We do not want to let it fall. We don't want it to die. The health ministry through the years has done a lot of good stuff under the leadership of Dr. Davis, and we want to keep that going. It is very important. But all hands make something work so that it's not a burden on any one or two people. You know, teamwork makes the dream work, amen? And so please, please come and be a part of this health ministry. Uh, you can bless someone, and we need to make sure that that does not die. So please, when you hear the call go out for the meeting, please come. But in the meantime, if you're interested, please call Sister Maxine and let her know that you want to be a part of our health ministry. It's vital, it's so important. And again, you touch so many other people. It's part of our faith walk. Amen? All right, please remember our Bible study, uh, 6 o'clock virtual. We're doing some really exciting stuff. We've got a new section that's coming out. And then Wednesday, our prayer and praise. I'm still, still trying to get the magic 4-0. <laughs> We should be able to get that without any problems. Come on out to prayer and praise. We need it in times like this. We need prayer. Only one hour, one hour. It's just like when Jesus told those disciples to fell asleep. He said, y'all couldn't just stay awake one hour with me. One hour of prayer, one hour of prayer. Come on out, online. Don't have to leave your house, amen? All right, so let's prepare for our dismissal and uh, be safe, have a good week, and let's give our mass choir a nice round of affirmation. They did a wonderful job, and our instrument folk, our instrument folk did a great job, kicked us off on a good, good way for Black History Month, amen? All right. Oh God, our God, the God that sits high and reaches low, the God that is always ever present, we come to you again with thanksgiving in our hearts and praises on our lips. We thank you for another worship experience. 
We thank you for the presence and the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, guide us. Help us to do as Paul said, to be strong, to be alert, and to stay faithful and to be courageous. Help us to stay woke in the days ahead and to be strong and to fight the power and touch those men and women that have wickedness in their hearts. Lord, we know you can change hearts and you can change minds. Be with us each and every day as we leave this sacred space. Keep us all safe, sound, covered, and protected until we can gather together again. And now may the love of our awesome, magnificent, great God, the peace of our resurrected Savior, our elder brother, his name is Jesus, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, abide, reside, and preside over each and every one of you, henceforth, now, and forever, and ever, and ever. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Go in peace. Annie Ruth, Annie Ruth.